May I have your Lordship's leave to commence the proceeding? Yes, please. May I request the Learned Advocate General to address? Lord, the Chief Justice, Honorable Judges, Learned Additional Solicitor General of India, Deputy Solicitor General, the Registry, the President and Secretary of the Bar Library Club, the President and Secretary of the Bar Association, President and Secretary of the Incorporated Law Society, members of the Bar, Honorable Supreme Court of India, the frequency with which I am having to address in obituary references is not a pleasant task. Today we are all assembled here for the full court obituary reference in remembrance of Somaradit Topal. I had known him personally. I had known him well. And he was a great source of encouragement to me in the profession. Mr. Pal graduated with a BA honors degree in history from Presidency College. He did a master's in modern history from Calcutta University and then acquired a LLB degree from Calcutta University. After obtaining his LLB degree, he went to England for further studies and was called to the bar from the Honorable Society of Inner Temple in London in 1966. As a student of law, his favorite subjects, surprisingly, were the law of contract and company law. It's what motivated him in England to take his bar exam. On his return to Kolkata, he joined the chambers of Sri Dipankar Gupto, who later went on to become the Advocate General of the State and thereafter the Solicitor General of India. Mr. Pal practiced extensively in both the original side and appellate side of the High Court in civil, constitutional, company and criminal matters. He established a pan-India reputation as a constitutional expert. He argued in several matters concerning service law, land reforms, land acquisition, and educational institutions. He appeared and argued in several landmark cases which included challenges to the constitutionality of the Calcutta Thika Tenancy Acquisition and Regulation Act, 1981, West Bengal Land Reforms and Tenancy Tribunal Act, 1997, the Shingur Land Rehabilitation and Development Act, 2011. He argued in cases involving the determination of tariff under the Electricity Regulation Regulatory Commission Act 1998, the well-known Priyambada Devi Birla Will case, and several other cases, including charges of, of oppression and mismanagement relating to Haldia Petrochemicals where he appeared for the state. I am taken back to his kindness in the profession. Pretty early on in my career, he asked me to assist him in a service matter. This related to the appointment of the head of a faculty in IIT Kharagpur. 
I still remember Mr. Jointo Mitro was appearing for the private respondent. Mr. Pal and I, we were appearing for the writ petitioner and Mr. Bhuya was appearing for IIT. He guided me in my preparation for the matter and then to my surprise, obtained leave from the learned judge for me to argue the matter. This was less than a year after me joining the profession. I was nervous, I was a bit unsure, but he sat beside me in court during the entire course of my arguments and was a constant source of encouragement to me right through the matter. This was a case of an exemplary senior. My parents and the Pals were good friends. So I got to see a fair bit of them. And they were also a husband and wife combination in court. They had several common issues to discuss, particularly how unfair the profession was to the lady members. I find things have changed now. In fact, the last case that Mr. Paul argued in the High Court was a case which my late father had also argued. It related to India steam laundry and the jurisdiction of the High Court to continue hearing a petition filed under Section 397, 398, even after the enactment of the Companies Act 2013. Needless to say, both of them lost that matter. Mr. Paul had a multitude of interests. He enjoyed music and in particular, Hindustani classical music. He had formed a trust to help musicians and he had reposed confidence in me in making me a trustee of that particular trust. Later on, we had to dissolve it because the trust had failed to achieve its purpose. He was also adept at rendering emotive performances of Trochinde Bormon songs. He was a philanthropist and deeply associated with Ramakrishna Mission. He authored the law of contempt, the law relating to public service, India's constitution, origins and evolution in 10 volumes. Several of his juniors either assisted him in authoring books or were themselves co-authors of these books. He had an illustrious set of lawyers in his chambers. Three ladies from his chambers became judges and one of whom is a sitting judge of the High Court and two have been co-authors. Mr. Paul was a devoted husband to his wife, Justice Ruma Paul, who retired as a judge of the Supreme Court and who was a constant source of encouragement to Mr. Paul in every endeavor of his. Mr. Paul leaves behind his devoted wife. On behalf of myself and members of the bar, I extend my heartful, heartfelt condolences to Mrs. Paul. May his soul rest in peace. May I request Mr. Jointo Mitro, Senior Advocate, Bar Library Club, to address?
my Lord, the Honorable Chief Justice, <clears throat> and my Lords. Uh, at the request of the uh, President of the Bar Library Club, the Vice President of the Bar Library Club, the committee members, and the members of the Bar Library Club, I have come before your Lordship to address on the occasion of this uh, very sad occasion of a condolence meeting of late Mr. Shamaradi Topal. Now, when I stand up and speak about Mr. Pal, comma, I, I, who was known as Bachu to all of us, and Bachuda to the juniors, I think of very many days I had long association with him. Well, at Mr. Mr. Paul was junior to me in Presidency College, Calcutta. He was a student of history honors. I was a student of economics honors. I came to know him then, but I didn't have very great acquaintance at that point of time. I came to know him after he joined the bar, two years after I joined the bar. Well, throughout my career, I found in Mr. Paul a very serious student of law. He behaved like a student throughout his professional career. His preparation on matters was something to be emulated. Painstaking, extremely painstaking, meticulous in his preparation of facts and law. And I always tell the juniors, junior members of the bar, that this is the way one should prepare for a case in court. He used to be thoroughly ready when he used to appear in court. I have never seen him amiss in that respect. He, during his professional career, about which Mr. Advocate General has spoken at length. I do not want to dilate on that very much, excepting saying that I had the occasion to either appear along with him or appear against him in a number of matters. And my experience had been that he was a formidable opponent whenever he used to appear against me. So I had to get ready in a, in a much better way than in normal circumstances whenever I used to appear against him. He was a storehouse of knowledge in so far as constitutional law matters are concerned. It had happened in course of my professional career, even though he was uh, slightly junior to me in the profession, but he was a colleague, no doubt. Whenever I had any problem with any abuse constitutional matter, I used to go sit next to him, ask him. And it was he who very uh, sympathetically used to explain and used to guide me as to where to find the law. I used to be ever so grateful to him for all that. Toward the end of his life, or I should say for the last five, ten years, unfortunately, Mr. Paul completely withdrew from the company of legal fraternity. Of course, the COVID intervened in the meantime, during which, in normal circumstances also, we drifted away from each other. But nonetheless, I tried to keep in touch with him during all these years, as I tried to do with all my other friends. But unfortunately, I could not get to Mr. Pal. He was otherwise not available. I feel 
that this was something which perhaps was the cause of gradual, gradual deterioration of his physical and mental condition. Toward the end, I do not know whether any one of us could contact him, but I could not. And that was to my great regret. Today, when I am standing before your Lordship, I do. I am not thinking of Bachu as a person who had been a, a giant in the field of law. His contribution to law, unlike most of us, is not only by way of presentation as an advocate in a court of law, but his contribution in the academic jurisprudential field also. I feel, I do not know about others, that his book on the law of contempt is one of the best on the subject. As a reference book, there is no comparison. His book on public service, I think that is also an authority on the subject. If one tries to find any problem with regard to service matter, one will be able to find something in that book. His book on constitution, I, mean, I, I don't have much to say about it. His 10 volumes, I say it is magnum opus. It is the creation which I personally feel would rank almost in the same category as the book by late Durgadas Basu on constitutional law. It is almost as good as that. In fact, his book on constitution, the 10 volumes, has got an additional factor. It has taken a large part from the parliamentary debates. And it is, uh, when one reads it, one gets immersed in reading this from any chapter in, the, in that particular, uh, particular uh, volumes of books. One almost is transported into history. The time when this constitutional law was written and prepared, that parliamentary debates, I could uh, read the debates of the great constitutional lawyers of, the, of that particular time. Today, when I stand here, I become a bit emotionally moved because I remember Bachu as I would like to remember him as I saw him long years ago, a young lawyer full of laughter and full of fun, full of song and full of music. He used to have very beautiful evenings when Bachu used to sing songs from Tagore from Shochin de Bourbon and the modern Bengali music. Occasionally, he used to lapse into modern Hindi songs, to which I remember our friends used to participate. He was a reservoir of celebration at that point of time. I am so sad and sorry that the junior members of the bar had not seen Mr. Pal in that way. When after about 15, 20 years of practice, or more than that, but 30, 40 years of practice, he was a serious jurist looking into 
I mean, rather, I should say, uh, uh, in the field of law, then he became very serious. And most of the members here present today have seen him like that. But I have seen him in a much lighter vein. He and his wife, Uma, very good, very close friend of ours. We spent our, many of our formative years together, going on trips, on holidays with our respective families. These were occasions of pure joy and merriment. I can never forget those. I am grateful to him for helping me to celebrate my life. I believe that more you praise and celebrate your life, the more there is in life to celebrate. And that is what I did. When I think of Bachu, it remi reminds me of the very poignant words of Albert Camus. He said, don't walk in front of me. I may not follow. Don't walk behind me. I may not lead. Just walk beside me and be my friend. Bachu, as Mr. Paul was then known, was a friend who walked beside me throughout my life. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in man mankind. These are the words of John Don. He said, any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind. And therefore, Ask me not for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for me. It is more so in the case of the death of a friend and a very close colleague. It, it has diminished me, no end. And the bell tolls louder than before for me. I will end my in end my offering of oblation to a very dear friend by remembering what Khalil Gibran has said so beautifully. He said, when you part from a friend, you grieve not. For that which you love most in him may be clearer in his absence as the mountain to the climber is clearer from the plain. Well, these words are words of con consolation. I remember these words and I console myself. My Lord, with the greatest of respect to the departed soul, I condole his death and extend my heartfelt condolence to his bereaved wife on my behalf and on behalf of the members of the Bar Library Club, my lords. May I request the president of the Bar Association to address? My Lord, the Chief Justice and his companion justices. My Lord, uh, so far as Bachuda is concerned, and I have a very bad man in politics. He used to take all my cases along with my senior, Mr. Shengupta, Parthu Sharathi Shengupta. And he used to draft himself. I don't have to go to, hey, what has happened? Send the, and I was jailed by the uh, assembly. He won the case with my senior. But now I feel that academic lawyers are withering away from High Court. Because after him, and before that, Mr. Justice A.M. Bhattacharya, they wrote books. But here, there is absence of books. So uh, all we pray to, all we request our seniors to write at least something before they leave us, not leave us in that sense. 
Now, his book, as I told, Mr. Mitro said, The Law of Contempt, it was the sixth edition now going on. Now, Public Service Law's fourth edition in 2021. And Constitution, up to, there are 10 volumes. My Lord, uh, it is about sixth, probably sixth edition. And MP Jain's Indian Constitutional Law, he, he revised. It is the sixth edition. Now, he was a man, purely academic, my Lord, he was a man who belonged to nobody and therefore belonged to everybody. Whoever junior members, we went to him, asking him some problems, he used to tell us in an academic, uh, academic way. So, we feel for him, my Lord. We have lost a great man for the last four years. We couldn't contact him. We couldn't contact him. He was, but the fact remains, whoever went to him, out of his way, he used to help us, as he helped me, from bringing out from the jail. Therefore, I, uh, I, do, I pray that we all remember him for the rest of our lives. May I request the Vice President of the Incorporated Law Society to address? My Lord, the Chief Justice, my Lord, the members of the registry, the learned Advocate General, Mr. Jointo Mitro, the President and Secretary of uh, the Bar Library Club, the President and Secretary of the Bar Association, my friends and colleagues present here. Lord, we, the, we have assembled here today to remember Mr. Shomoradi Topal, who breathed his last on 9th of March, 2023. In remembering him, the first thing that crosses my mind, that he was a thoroughbred gentleman. And when anybody mixed with him, it was impossible to ascertain his stature unless a person knew his background. He was so down to earth. To say the least, he was a gentleman per se, with very, very amiable disposition without any air about him. This was one quality which I always noticed in him. When I joined the bar, in 1984, he had already established himself as a constitutional and administrative law expert. In fact, I would say that he was expert in any matter, in any law which was involved in any matter. Now, as a law, law junior, I have seen him argue the Thika tenancy matter before the Honorable Special Bench. That was around 1987, I think, and he was, he really, the, he really spearheaded the attack on the act, which when he was ably assisted by Mr. Joydeep Gupto and Justice Banerjee, Indra Banerjee, who is now present in, before with us. Now, his submissions on the interpretation of Section 5 of the Act as to which land will come under the Thika Tenancy Act and further that a portion of the statute should be held as ultra-virus were, were upheld by the special bench. This judgment continues to hold the field till date and has been recently upheld by the Supreme Court in the context of the Tika Tenancy Act 2001. His success in the profession had no boundaries and he just excelled. To mention the few, few cases, in Poshimbongo Bhumiji v. Shongo, he successfully argued and got Section 14V of the West Bengal Land Reforms Act to be declared ultra -virus. 
He appeared in the Tata Motors case, CSC tariff determination case, Rizanur Nahman case, the will case of Priyambada Devi Birla. The list is in a ex uh, exhaustible. Any important legal matter in this high court had him from one side or the other. Despite his busy professional life, he authored very many books and Mr. Mitro has already mentioned about the public service, law of contempt and Indian constitution origins and evolution. These are masterpieces to speak the least. <clears throat> The, he was closely associated with Ramakrishna Mission. He has been a music lover and a regular in Doverland Music Conference. I had the privilege to assist him in some of the matters. And each time I visited his chamber to hold a conference, I went through a process of learning. I enriched myself in his association. He was an ocean of knowledge. I am. Sure, my colleagues who came in contact with him and had similar experience. In him, we have lost a legal luminary and a leader of the bar. Mr. Pal, uh, the death of Mr. Pal is a great loss to the legal fraternity. His absence will leave a void and felt for all times to come. Apart from his legal acumen, he was also a big supporter of the Indian Law Institute, but always ensured that his name should never feature in whatever he did to support the Institute. He has left behind his wife, Mrs. Justice Murumapal, who has been a judge of this court and the Honorable Supreme Court. I, on behalf of the Incorporated Law Society and on behalf of the members of the bar, do express our sincere condolence to the family and pray to God that his soul may rest in peace. May I request the Honorable Chief Justice to a kindly address? My esteemed sister and brother judges, honorable former judges of this court and Supreme Court who are present physically or virtually, learned advocate general, president and secretary of the Bar Library Club, president and secretary of the Bar Association, president and secretary of the Incorporated Law Society, learned members of the Bar. We have assembled here to pay homage to senior advocate, late Mr. Samradit Pal, who has departed for his heavenly abode on 9th March, 2023. We are deeply saddened by the demise of such an eminent barrister and senior advocate of this court. Mr. Pal was the husband of Honorable Justice Ruma Pal, formal judge of this court as well as the Supreme Court of India. Mr. Paul was one of the most revered senior advocate of this court. He had a unique style and had set an example of making efforts to raise the standards of the bar, exhibiting knowledge, wisdom, fairness, and professional commitment. He was appointed as Amicus Curie to assist the court in various matters and had rendered his valuable opinion in the complex and intricate questions of law. I'm told that Mr. Paul always wore a smiling face. He was very simple, sober, well-mannered, and disciplined advocate. He had no ego and was always polite and respectful to the bench, his juniors, and colleagues. I understand that at present, there are a large number of promising lawyers in the bar who owe their very existence in the bar to the guidance and mentorship that they had received from Mr. Paul during their formative days in the profession. Mr. Paul was very amiable in nature, for which he was always respectful to everybody in the bench and bar. His legal exuberance, 
and human qualities were appreciated by his colleagues, lawyers, clients, and friends. Mr. Paul was an expert in constitutional and administrative law. He had argued several matters relating to service law, industrial disputes, educational institutions, and land. Mr. Paul's contribution in the field of law is well reflected in the innumerable reported judgments of cases in different leading journals. He had argued various, various landmark cases. Some of them are Calcutta Electricity Supply Corporation in Tariff Determination under Electricity Regulatory Commission Act 1998, Land Acquisition of Nandi Gram, Tata Motors Nano Car Plant at Singur, Election Commission in West Bengal Panchayat Poll, Premavati, Premavada Devi Birla Will Case. Mr. Paul had authored several books like The Law of Contempt, Law Relating to Public Service, India's Constitution, etc. Mr. Paul was having a deep philanthropic bent of mind. Apart from being a deeply, apart from being deeply associated with Ram Krishna Mission, he had helped the poor people around him. I am told that he was also a great music lover. He had formed a trust for helping the artists. He has been snatched from our company by the cruel hands of fate at the age of 85 years. We have lost a very important pillar of the lawyer fraternity, which is difficult to forget. On behalf of my, my colleagues, the officers and the staff of the High Court at Calcutta, and on my own behalf, I place on record our heartfelt condolences to the members of the bereaved family and wish them strength to bear this irreparable loss. May God bestow peace to the departed soul. All are requested to kindly stand up to observe one minute silence as a mark of respect to the departed soul. <coughs> As a mark of respect to the departed soul, the court is adjourned for the rest of the day. May I have the leave of your lordship to declare the proceeding as concluded? Yes.